I'm going to saw through your bones! Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Now, as following the success of my recent Soyuz video, I decided to take it up a notch and replicate the American counterpart, which was, which was of course, before it was retired, the Space Shuttle. Ooh, the f that flag's got in the way there. <laughs> um, so, I found it was much easier to actually design something that looked like the Space Shuttle in KSP because you've got all of these Mark III parts and the big S wings that were clearly designed for the Space Shuttle. It's the tank is slightly harder, it's actually much much thinner and taller than the original Space Shuttle. Well no, it's the same height but it's much thinner than it would originally be. The tank actually sticks out to the side as you can see in this photo quite a bit more and the boosters are bigger. Um, but as we can see here, we've got those vector engines on the bottom which are angled away so they point through the centre of mass. And inside the cargo bay we've got a science lab and all of that stuff that's needed when we're in orbit. You can see just by the tail, two OMS pods for manoeuvring around in orbit. I've also set up some action groups to turn the engines on and off. So let's try and launch it and see what happens. So here we are on the launch pad. Okay throttling up to full, turning SAS and RCS on, and now the main engines fire first, and then the solid rocket boosters fire, just like in the main thing. The main engines actually fired for six seconds before takeoff on the actual space shuttle launches, because they took time to spool up to their maximum throttle, and they had to check that it was all working fine. So here we are, in four times time acceleration now, we've got a tilt over onto our back, so we're actually going the correct direction, because the centre of rust is offset quite a long way from the centre of mass, so we actually started off going the wrong way, if you saw that. But now we're just sort of turning over onto our back and heading up into orbit. Now this thing is very, very difficult to control. It's not like the Soyuz with all of those Verney engines. And as you see here, when we detach our solid rocket boosters for the first time, we have what looks like Challenger type disaster. <laughs> yes. As you all probably know, the Challenger Space Shuttle sadly exploded due to a fault with the solid rocket boosters during its launch. But this gives us a good opportunity to see how the solid rocket boosters were actually recovered. So you can see we're deploying a drogue chute on the top of that one, and now three main parachutes that allowed the solid rocket boosters to safely float down into the ocean and be recovered later on for reuse. So let's give that another try. We're back here, give solid booster separation another go. And there we are, we see those little separatron jets pushing it away from the wings this time. <laughs> I don't really know what went wrong the other time. But now we're safe and we're heading back up under more time acceleration again. So we're starting to lose a little bit of roll control. <laughs> I'm desperately trying to keep this straight and I sort of succeed but not very much. Those engines wobbling around at those massive gimbal angles. You can see. Designed to enable them to keep up with the changing centre of mass as fuel was used up. So here we are, we're almost entering orbit. We're a little bit off centre but who cares? We're not actually going to rendezvous with anything today because I, I think I'd die if I tried to do that. But here we are, just completing our circularization burn now, adding a manoeuvre. Circularize our orbit. And here we go. So, we're looking until the fuel in that tank runs out. And we don't want to run the engines dry because that would have damaged the engines in real life, it doesn't really matter now, but once we've almost run out of liquid fuel, then we'll roll over and separate the tank for us, and that will crash back down to Earth, and we will continue into orbit. There we are, that little... that's actually a jet of oxygen in the real space shuttle. that's vented from the tank to help it fall away more easily. So now I've just got to put, make a manoeuvre and complete it with my OMS, which used 
uh, I think it was hydrazine you yeah, Messi used. I'll check that for you. <laughs> um, rather than the liquid hydrogen oxygen mix that the normal space, the main space shuttle engines used, which is very efficient, but it takes up a lot of space, which is why that massive external tank is so massive. Here we are lining up with the maneuver and warping to when it is. And we've turned off those main engines, now we're using the orbital maneuvering system. I've actually realised because those things are vectored so far away from the centre of mass, I had to pitch up quite by quite a lot to actually make make it go in the right direction. But there we are, a relatively circular orbit. And now we can just mess around, open our cargo bay doors, do our science. And we've got a docking adapter in the middle there, along with some batteries. We could we could decouple that if we were adding a module to the space station or something, but we're not doing that at the moment because it messes with my centre of mass. It's already difficult enough to put this thing back on the ground. So there we are, close away the cargo bay again. I do like these animations. And let's get one of our let's get one of our curls out for EVA. Let's see. You, Derald Kerman. I choose you to try out our man maneuvering unit, which was also pioneered on the space shuttle missions. Now the Kerbal EVA pack is much much more efficient than the MMA MMUs that NASA used. And they were very, very difficult to control in real life. But I seem to be having some difficulty controlling this Kerbal as well. Poor Daryl, he can't get back in his ship. Oh dear. There we are. My, by bumping into the spaceship I seem to have made a weird rumbling noise. And meanwhile, our external tank is busy entering the atmosphere. Here it is, getting the lovely ram heating effect. The external tank was the only non-reusable part of this. There we are, there it is crashing into the surface. It's normally meant to blow up in the atmosphere, but since there's nothing on the ground, then it seemed to be relatively heat resistant, so that's what happened in this case. You wouldn't want that to happen on top of a city though, or something like that. So they did design it to burn up in the, atmos in the atmosphere. So the space shuttle wasn't entirely reusable. That, that big orange tank was not reusable like the boosters in the orbiter. So here we are completing our re-entry burn. We're trying to, trying to aim this so we get back to the space center. It's very difficult to predict because you've got the, the motion of the surface and everything. But this is one of my best attempts. Seem to have got our RCS tank hanging out for the bottom of the spacecraft there. That's not meant to happen. I should have put more struts or something in there. Here we are. I've, I've, I've judged this just about right. You don't want to know how many attempts it took to get this <laughs> entry right. It was many. Let's just say that. So here we are, pitching up to try and slow ourselves down and also to distribute the heat around. But the heat wasn't distributed enough and we end up disintegrating. We had both a Challenger and a Columbia disaster now with our space shuttles. They weren't particularly safe vehicles. Partially why they were retired. Although mainly because it took so... having a reusable spacecraft meant that although you didn't have to build a new one each time you launched it, you had to repair it. And repairing something as complex as the space shuttle actually costs much more than building something simple like the Soyuz from fresh. Here we are, we're slowing down a little bit quicker now. Returning back to the Kerbal Space Center. Got our RCS jets on the nose and the tail firing. I tried to position them as close to what they were in the on the original one, so we've got some pointing sideways and downwards and upwards on the nose, and then we've got two big blocks of thrusters on the back where the RMS pods are to control our descent. 
And here we are. It's slowing down now. We've run out of ram heating. And we're just going to pitch down to try and arrest our descent a little bit more. Ooh, that was a lot of g-force there. I'm surprised I survived that, actually. But here we are. We're, we're down to relatively low speeds now. This is similar to what a plane would have. I think we're subsonic now. So let's deploy our landing gear and see what happens. Okay, we're heading towards the ground. And pitch up. Pitch up. We're almost there. Just one last step. Space Shuttle landing gear had to work the first time, so they had lots of fail safes in it. Right down to sort of explosive bolts which would decouple it. But here we are pitching up to slow down our vertical speed. And we're almost at the surface. And we have touched down. And let's deploy the drogue chute to let us slow down quicker. Because the brakes on the Space Shuttle weren't particularly good. And there we go. I think we've made a safe landing. Cut the parachute and slow to a stop. There we go. We missed the runway, but who cares about that? We're pretty close. Yay! Daryl's happy. He's back on Kervin. But no! The space shuttle is rolling away! <laughs> well, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Goodbye! My professional opinion? Haha! <laughs> You should subscribe.